Welcome to On the Road with Matty Rocks, live on location at Myth Nightclub in Maplewood, Minnesota. Joined by special guest Johnny Hetherington, lead frontman for the band Art of Dying. And I actually have the rest of the band here as well. So thanks, guys, for joining me. Thanks, man. Thanks for having us. All right. You guys are currently on tour with uh, Shinedown. How many, uh, how many stops is this? Wow. We started uh, almost four or five weeks ago with the guys and just hit the ground running. It's been... Day, you know, at days days off are kind of rare on this tour. We've, we've been had a lot of driving days off, but I think it's like 40, 30, 40 shows or something over two months. So a grueling schedule. How's it going so far? Great. Yeah, we're uh, we love touring. Like that's where the magic happens. You know, we we even do a lot of writing on the road. So it's just like it's it's great to be together as as a five some, and it's great to just play every night and write every day and hang out. Very nice. Johnny, take Matty Rock's listeners back to the early years of your life in Canada um, and give us an insight how you got involved with music. Well, I was in my mother's womb. <laughs> no. Um, I grew up in like small towns uh, in, in Alberta, which is just north of Montana, and uh, always dreamed about moving to the big city and, and pursuing music. And just ever since I could sing, I sang and just kept going so i moved to vancouver uh started playing guitar on the street there just to kind of get chops and learn how to play and sing at the same time really i was just like needed to do that and i uh, happened to meet greg one one day on the street and and uh you know our partnership started then and we never looked back it's just been it's been a, a lot of years of just playing together and, and doing it we met um jeffy uh also from vancouver just in our rehearsal space and just through the local music scene and he he tied us together to uh, Tavis and Kale, who are actually a couple thousand miles away near Toronto. And uh, the five of us met for the first time, had a few beers, really got along as people. And we flew and, and drove to our first show together in the middle of nowhere, back in Alberta, actually, in Calgary. And the first time we ever played together was on stage, and it was just just seamless you know we just felt amazing about about the music because just as much as the the friendship so it just clicked right on you two have been together since the beginning so a strong yeah. strong partnership there yes <laughs> you heard it you heard uh, it from greg's a man of few words <laughs> where did the uh name art of dying come from it's from a longer sentence um the art of dying is my life to live and and that whole little idea just came from a crazy conversation one night of of, um, of just what life's about and and about spending your time here wisely or or I don't know it's just recognizing that life's precious and that you're not going to last forever so you know it, it is important what you're doing with your time while you're here and I think I used to think that you know you should live your life you, everyone's heard that saying like you should live your life like like it, you won't have one tomorrow or whatever and I, I don't really agree with that I think because you can get a little crazy if you live your life like like there's no tomorrow I think you should live your life like it might be your last day you know not like that you recognize it might be your last day not that you think it will be so it's just a cool kind of perspective that we all share it kind of became our our little code that we live by and that's why we're always laughing and having fun and not getting too caught up in the you know, the bullshit of just, you know, whether it's being in a band or the business of music or, you know, working with record labels and stuff. We try to stay really just, you know, pretty pretty happy and calm and just loving every minute of it. That's great because that, that's what makes a band. I mean, having fun doing it. If you're not having fun, why do it? Yeah, I think you have to be. I think you have to be for, for it to last, really. You know, you got to be enjoying it and you got to... Uh, love the people you're living with slash playing with you know and that goes from your crew guys your front of house guy to <clears throat> all your bandmates you just got to be enjoying it for sure right on um what is the typical warm-up routine for you before you take the stage i have lots of rituals and the more the longer we're out the, the better it gets it's like uh, an hour before the show we do this thing called lockdown although tavis is not really a fan of it um but no we just basically try and get everyone out of our space for for one hour before our, sh our show so that we can really s talk about the show and get pumped jeffy usually cranks some tunes and and we get inspired by some of our heroes and um i usually do uh i usually do a shot of espresso or coffee about an hour before the show too because i'm just a 
I'm a coffee addict, and it just gives me a little extra whatever. We, we have a bottle of honey on this tour that we've been barbecuing with and stuff, so I'll usually take a pull off of that for a little sugar. And then uh, I'll go... I, I was really, really fortunate enough to uh, work with a woman named Melissa Cross, who teaches... Uh, her DVDs are called Zen of Screaming, and she's an amazing, amazing vocal instructor. So I do a, a little, what she calls the morning warm up, which is more of a speaking warm up. But I find that that's enough for me right now because we get kind of get in the zone out here. So I've been doing the morning warm up about an hour before the show too, and then uh, yeah, we have a shot of Jack. Kale pours some Jack in my, in my hair, and we pound it out, do a round of cheers, and rock the fuck out. Very nice. Good rituals. Um, everyone has musical influences. Who are some of your musical influences who have helped shape you as a, as a lead front man? It's a great question. They're always coming, and, and uh, new ones are, are just awesome. Like, Tavis and Greg really introduced me to Led Zeppelin in the last few years. It just blows my mind what those guys did and how they sound and the passion that comes out of the performances. Um, really, the, the biggest musical movement that ever ever came to me was uh, was the grunge movement in the 90s. Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, all of those bands just, just totally uh, changed the way I thought about music, changed the way I thought about concerts, and, and there's just a passion and a reality, a realness, not a reality, just a realness that they brought to the table that I think we all really have a common ground on and it just kind of that's the same realness that we search for in our performances and our music so those are the big ones very nice uh to date art of dying has uh released two studio albums you've got the uh, independent release art of dying in 2007 um and then uh, vices of virtues in 2011 tell me something about uh those projects and out of those two projects which one to you is are you most proud of and why Ooh, that's a good question. I, I don't think you compare, can compare the two records, um, although some of the so- same songs appear on both. Uh, when we were independent, it was a, it was a, always running by the seat of your pants kind of vibe. You know, you you never knew. You're just basically rubbing stones together, trying to get a spark all the time, rubbing sticks together, whatever. And and that's kind of how that album was born. You know, we had the, with the help of, um, there's a an arm of the Canadian government called Factor that really helps Canadian bands make recordings and we were lucky enough to have some money come in from those guys and that really spurred some demos and spurred the album and that album just was such a trip like uh, it was just a young band young producer young engineer you know stealing and borrowing to get what we needed to get it done it was like 30 days in a studio in Vancouver and it was just a unforgettable experience and we really learned a lot about ourselves just that's that is by far the thing i love the most about the studio is you learn so much about yourself as a musician every time you can look back and go with hindsight you can just really feel different for the rest of your life like it's it's like a i don't know man it's like oh cramming for a major exam or something and then you you know, while you're doing that, you're thinking, this sucks, and, but you're really learning all this stuff. Right. And then you look back a couple months later and you're like, wow, I'm really better for that experience. So it's kind of like that. And Vices and Virtues, I mean, so different because we were, we were more mature, more prepared, I think. And it was so exciting because we, we, we flew to LA and we didn't even have our record deal signed yet. And we're already in pre-production with Howard Benson you know it just about to make this record our actual record deal actually showed up in a manila envelope at our jam space in LA and we just signed it on the floor and went for lunch and it was just a crazy experience the whole thing so it was really cool to to be in such a awesome parad you know like city like LA like I I don't even know how to explain we're staying in this crazy hotel called the Oakwoods and we just I don't know you can you can only imagine what we got up to but it was just there was a lot of cheap champagne a lot of white robes a lot of hot tubs a lot of making music and and a lot of fun oh we had so much fun like if you could see me and Tavis in the vocal booth 
and Kale and, and just everyone all at the same time. But I remember specifically the vocal booth just being what should be a very serious place. You got your microphone, you got your inspiration. You know, it should be very serious. And we're just rolling in there with like as many beers as we could fit on the stools and a bottle of champagne and just laughing and tearing our shirts off and bringing other people in there and you can you can hear our necklaces and our fucking just the whole time was just a, a gong show and super fun we we're just laughing in between takes and having so much fun a lot of fun see there's there's the that fun keeps coming out in this um back to those two projects are those are those the pinnacle of art of dying or or is that project yet to come i don't even think the world really knows art of dying yet because of kind of exactly what I just described it it's it's been this uh, uh, birth and growth and and baby steps from independent to re-recording some of the same songs with with major producers and then working with Dan Donegan which we discovered a whole new thing working with him finishing the record in Chicago and now we're about I think we're about to make the best record of our lives in probably 2013 which um, you know, we all contribute to equally and all really are passionate about and the songs are just ridiculous that we're writing right now. So we're very, very excited about the future. And we're looking forward to hearing that project. Um, where do the ideas and inspirations come from making the songs? A lot of the time it, it just comes from our our beings, like just who we are and our conversations and there'll, there'll be a lyric that we'll just be humming and it'll be like oh that's that's really cool that you know and we'll build on it kale just brought in a crazy idea that we're just starting to think about and build on and um i i love diving into like when i get home from tour i love diving into lyrics and just i'm a huge cuban cigar fan and i'm a huge scotch fan and i like drinking wine and stuff and i really go into a different zone at home where where i just lock myself on my patio smoke a couple cigars and try and write the lyrics for an entire song get my head really really wrapped around an idea and and just the right amount of gin or scotch and cigars and all of a sudden the the ether yeah just opens up it's good it's really good very nice if you will um talk about the song get through this um i know that song is very special to you um it has a very special meaning Totally, yeah. I used to work in a futon store in Vancouver, where actually that used to be my cigar and scotch lounge without the cigar and scotch. <laughs> it was kind of like brought my acoustic guitar to work all the time and just plucked away when no one was in there and, and had a lot of fun there. And so I always had a guitar around, and, and I got a phone call one day from my family saying my dad was diagnosed with cancer, and I was just, I shit my pants. I was just like, I don't know what just happened. I, I locked the door, I locked the store up. I'm like, back in five minutes. And uh, I just grabbed my guitar and let it all out the way. I was trying to think of how my dad might f- have felt in that moment, how I was feeling in that moment, and just kind of let it pour out. And it was, you always hear that, that the, the good songs come quickly, and that just came in a couple of hours, just really honestly. And yeah, that's. My dad survived, so it's a real happy ending right now. He's actually eight years cancer-free on this past May 5th, so it's just a, a total uh, total celebration to sing in each night. I think about him a lot on stage when I sing it. Very nice. Thanks for sharing that. Um, you guys have toured with some pretty amazing acts so far. Um, and you also have a very special relationship with Disturbed. Talk about that relationship. Yeah, very much so, man. Those guys um, signed us. They took us under the, their wing and uh, really gave us the break, you know, like quote unquote break that bands always hope for. And that really comes from the passion of Dan Donegan and, and David Draymond. They're just, you know, they've been slugging it out for 10 or 12, 15 years or whatever with Disturbed. And they saw a lot of themselves in us, I think. So we were really fortunate to to run into those guys, go on tour with them and sign to their label. And and a lot of the bands we tour with, you know, like Adam uh, Gonti from Three Days Grace is Kale's cousin, and we've toyed around with playing together a few times. We've t- luckily bumped into each other on some bigger festivals, and those guys are just super great people, super supportive as well. Uh, you know, it just... 
I don't know, we I feel blessed that we have these little paths that are crossing all the time. And you're right, man. We've we played with so many great bands from from Seether to Three Days, Disturbed, uh, Five Finger Guys. We're yeah. we're getting close with again now that we're seeing them again, and just the list is just growing. And it's so fun to be part of that community because it's just like this touring community where you you hope pray for those big festivals where you get backstage and all the buses are lined up and you're like oh yeah they're oh and you get to see your old friends again it's really fun very nice how important are your fans to what you do it's they are the most important thing that exists you know it's if if people don't listen to your music if people don't aren't affected by your music and people don't buy your music or or get it somehow you're just like there's no you know, you can play music for yourself, but which I enjoy sitting at home playing music for myself. But I really more enjoy the relationship that comes from people hearing the words in music, and all of a sudden you have a a new friend that is just getting what you're doing, and it, it's so important. There's no other. And you guys are known as the band who stays behind last until <laughs> your last fan has really seen you. Yeah. A lot of venues, man. Yeah, we we. Uh, we get kicked out at the end of the night by security when it's because we don't want to leave. We really we enjoy meeting everyone, and I I always remember the special concerts that I went to and bands that stuck around, and that that makes your whole perspective just as a young person. You're just like I don't know. I think that can be the difference of choosing music as a career. Right. Meeting the right musician after a show just changes your whole whole life. I. I I had the opportunity to hang out with Nikki Six the other night nice. for like an hour, and it, he probably had no idea how important that was to me, but it was just like a really cool thing, and, and we try to be that, that, you know, we're not a band that hides behind a lot of security, and like, we don't want to, we don't want to get to know, like, we want to get to know everyone. Right. It's just fun. That's great, and, and I know the fans appreciate that. What does the future hold for uh, Art of Dying? more of this yeah we're going to be touring in support of vices and virtues for as far as we can see on the horizon i'm we i think we have you know sorry is a current single and it's just just starting to do really really well just entered the top 20 and uh we want to keep playing it every night so people get to hear it hopefully it keeps going at radio and um there's talk of more singles on off the album after this so we're just going to keep going until until it's time to get back in the studio uh, where can Maddie Rocks listeners keep up with uh, information on yourself as well as the rest of the band and all the kick-ass music that you guys are putting out? You know what? The best thing to do is type Art of Dying into Google and all of our social networks pop up. That's you know, and, and we pride ourselves on being involved in the social networks every day too. You know, it's, that's part of who we are is trying to get back to every email, every message, every you know thing we can do. So we're launching a lot of cool stuff right now too. There's a... Um, a sorry profile pick campaign that we just started that's very very cool we're going to actually uh we just recorded an acoustic version of sorry with dan donegan producing and we're making a music video uh utilizing all of our fans profile picks so it's going to be an official music video for the acoustic version so change your profile pic holding up a picture of sorry and you could be on our official music video soon that's one of the things we're doing you heard it um, if you had the opportunity to say something to Maddie Rocks listeners throughout the United States who are going to listen to this interview or throughout the world, um, what would you say to them? Keep supporting music. Keep going to rock shows. And uh, keep, keep letting your radio stations know how important that is because those guys really make the world go round when it comes to keeping bands coming to different cities and bringing them, bringing them in for shows. And that's what it's all about to us. Thanks, Johnny, for uh, taking the time out of your busy day uh, to uh, do this interview with me and uh, all the rest of you as well for sitting in. That's great. Um, you've heard it here, Maddie Rocks listeners, on the road with Maddie Rocks, live with uh, Johnny Hetherington, lead frontman for Art of Dying. Stay tuned for uh, some tracks from the band. Don't go anywhere. Thanks again, man. Thank you.